I've been working with Azure's free app service tier for Linux, which has been a lot of fun, mostly because it's been free, which I like. All I've had to do is to send up a Docker Compose file, which pulls together an image from Docker Hub containing my Elixir app, and also pulls a Redis image, which is my application's database. This works, but the repository is public, which isn't ideal. In the real world, we probably don't want to allow Joe or Jill Public to download and run our application, so I need to fix that today by making my Docker repository private. I can do this on Docker Hub easily by flipping a switch right on my repo to make it private. And as you can see, I'm allowed one private repo with my current free Docker Hub plan. If I want more repositories, I need to pay, which is fine by me, as the price is reasonable starting at $7 a month for five private repositories. But I like alternatives, and I especially like the idea of keeping all my application assets in a single place, the Azure data centers. ACR pricing is similar to Docker Hub depending on which tier I choose. The basic tier comes out to right around $5 a month with 10 gigs of storage size. I can bump that to the standard tier, which is roughly $20 a month. I think that's pretty reasonable. And in case you're curious, the container size of my Elixir application is about one gig. So here's my application, which I pushed to Azure in episode eight. This is a multi-container site, which is running Elixir, as I mentioned, and Redis. And this is my Docker Compose file. In addition, this is how I pushed everything to Azure. This is my make file. I want to use ACR to host my container, so the first thing I need to do is to investigate how that's done. Again, I'm not a portal person. I prefer the Azure CLI, as I find it to be, basically, a text browser. If I type AZ in my shell, then I can see all kinds of commands, and the one I'm looking for is, well, it's for the container registry, the ACR, and as I expected, there it is. Let's investigate how to use the ACR subcommand, and I'll do what I typically do by accessing the Azure CLI help system using the dash dash help flag that follows any subcommand. As always, there's a bunch of commands that I could use to distract myself, but I want to stay on target, and that target is creating an ACR registry. As I've come to expect, there is a create command right there. I'll use the help system once again to see what's needed to use the AZ ACR create command, and right at the bottom I can see a very helpful example. I think this is all I need. I just need to give it a registry name, a resource group, and a SKU. Before I do any of that, I want to create a resource group for my registry, and I'll call mine 011 after the number of this episode. I think it's a good idea to stop for a second because I want to point out that your resource group here is very, very important. In previous videos, I have been lumping my app service and database and everything else into the same resource group, and if deployment fails, well, I just drop the resource group. If I did that here, <laughs> I would lose my entire registry, which is kind of a bad idea. So be careful what resource group you put your registry in, and make sure you name it something good, as we'll see in just a second. All right, let's move on to actually creating our registry, and I want to run the AZ ACR create command. But what should the SKU argument be? I can see the standard SKU in the example here, and I think I saw basic online as a choice before in a pricing tier, but I want to be sure. I'll have a look at the help command one more time to be sure I am not missing anything, and I see the SKUs. There we go. Basic, classic, premium, and standard. I'll choose basic as the price works for me. But what's this right here? Seems like admin enabled might be something that I need to understand before moving forward, don't you think? For this, let's head to the documentation. I got here by doing a quick Google search on AZ CLI admin dash enabled. It looks like the idea is to allow simple access rather than going through the more complex option of using Azure's Active Directory and Identity Principle. For larger customers, I'm sure that's a good idea. Having more control over access is a good thing. For my purposes, simple access is better, so I'm going to set admin enabled to true. All right, well, this looks like a pretty good command. Whoops. <laughs> Validation error. Parameter registry name must have a length greater than five. That makes sense. Looks like I'm a little bit short of that. The name 011 for a container registry is also a bit silly. I should probably add some details. How about I add dash registry to the end of it and try it one more time? Nope. <laughs> looks like I violated some kind of regex naming scheme. It only wants alphanumeric characters, and that makes sense. Your container registry is a place that will hold all of your Docker repos, and therefore should have some degree of organization, <laughs> don't you think? A good naming strategy might be something like you know, company, or department, or group, or some kind of project name. I think, for my purposes, it would be nice to have a registry where I could push the images for Azure Casts. So that's what I'm going to call mine. All right, it worked that time, and we have ourselves a registry. So now what? How do we access it and use it? Well, reading the docs one more time, all we have to do is to tell the Azure CLI to show us the credentials. 
And I can do that with AZ, ACR, credential, show, and then the name of my registry. And you can see that in the command right here in the documentation. And by the way, yes, I rerolled the passwords that you see here, so you can't hijack my registry. <laughs> I did it just now, as a matter of fact, using AZ, ACR, credential, and renew. Okay, before I forget, I need to store this password so I can access my registry from my shell scripts. The best place for me to do this is my .env file or .m file. If you don't know what that is, have a Google. It basically allows me to store values in here that I can access later on through my shell as environment variables. All right, there's one last step and I was tempted to let us find out the hard way, but this video is already pretty long, so I'll just get right to it. We created a private container registry on Azure with simple admin access. We need to tell Docker about that access, Otherwise, we're going to get an authentication error. I originally thought that Azure would just know who I am because I'm authenticated using the Azure CLI. So everything should just work. Unfortunately, Docker and the Docker CLI doesn't care about my Azure credentials. It's a completely separate tool, which means that I need to tell Docker how to authenticate to my new registry. I can, if I want to, do a Docker login and give it the username and password along with the registry URL that I just showed with my credentials. Or I could have Azure do it for me. Let's do that, because I'm lazy. I'll use the command az acr login and pass in the name of my registry. Great. Azure told the Docker CLI about my repo and also created an authentication token good for one hour. If you want to read more about this, head over to the documentation. Now we get to build our project and push it. And for this, I'll need some more information from Azure, specifically the URL of the server that we're going to push to. If I run az acr show and pass the name of my registry, I'll get the information that I need. Docker uses a conventional naming strategy to know where to push your image that basically resembles a URL. To see how this works, let's build our image. I'll use docker build t for here comes the tag, azurecast.azurecr.io forward slash 011 elixir. All right, our project is built. Now we just need to push, and I can do that using docker push, and then once again, my tag. And up it goes. Let's be sure it's up there. If I run az acr repository list and then pass in the name of my registry, I can see our repo. Awesome. The first thing to do is simple. I just change where my image is being pulled from in my Docker Compose Azure file, resetting the repository to my Azure registry. I also need to update my make file. I'll add a variable with my container registry name at the top here and use it along with my app name to create a full tag of my image. Now comes the fun part. I need to do two things. I need to give Azure the permissions it needs to pull the image during deployment, and I need to enable continuous deployment so whenever the image changes, my app is updated. The first thing I'll do is use the help system for AZ web app config. As I'm guessing the changes I need are in the configuration somewhere, I can see right here that there is a subcommand for containers. How do I use this? I have no idea. Let's ask the help system. I'll ask for help with the az web app config container set command, and here we go. We've seen this before back in episode 8 when I deployed multiple containers for free. This time, I'm most interested in the Docker registry arguments. Looks like I can use these to identify my server, username, and password. Perfect. The password is the easiest one. Now, if you recall, I saved that into my .n file, which is local here, and I don't save that in my source control. And that's going to pop that value into my environment variables, which means I can use them in my shell scripts. That means in my make file here, I can just set dollar sign acrpw and be done with it. The server URL needs to be fully qualified, which means it needs to start with HTTPS. The rest of the domain is just my username plus azurecr.io. Finally, the username is pretty simple. It's just azurecast, which is the name of my registry. The last thing to do is to make sure I specify the resource group using dash G and we're good to go. All right, well, let's see if this works. I'll execute my make file by running make in my shell, which seems to have gone off okay. The initial load of the site is gonna take some time as it normally does because Azure is pulling down the image and inflating it, setting things up for us. If we take a look at the logs, we can see our image is being pulled down and the container created. After a couple of minutes, we are up. This is a multi-container deployment running on the Linux free tier, pulling from the Azure Container Registry, which to be ultra clear is not free, but it's still worth every penny. All right, this is neat and all, but I need to do the second thing we came here to do, which is to set up continuous deployment. 
I could make life easy on myself and just flip this little switch right here through the portal. But you know me, I like to do it with shell scripts. I need to get some help with this, so I will ask Azure. I start with the AZ web app deployment command and ask for help and move down the subcommand chain until I end up with AZ web app deployment container config. <laughs> and there it is, enable CD. I have to set that to true. This definitely could be easier to find, but hey, didn't take me that long. Now I need to add this target to my make file, which I'll call enable CD, setting config as a prerequisite, and then resetting the logging target to have enable CD as another prereq. Rather than drop everything and run again, I'll just execute this command from the command line. AZ web app deployment container config dash dash enable CD true. And then I'll pass in the name of my app and resource group. That works just fine. And what we get back is interesting. Look at that CI CD URL. That sort of looks like a webhook, doesn't it? I'll get to that in a second. If we head back to the portal and refresh, you can see that we are now set up for continuous deployment. Let's put that to the test and make sure that updates go off as we expect. Here in my Elixir app, I'll change the greeting on the home page to a different message. Next, because I'm lazy and I love make files, I'll add two additional targets. The first called build, which builds our image locally, and the next called push. Can you guess what that does? Docker push. Let's run those and push our updated image to Azure. <laughs> Uh-oh, looks like I've been talking a little bit too much and we have been logged out. This is kind of hard to see, don't you think? We can get around this easily by re-authenticating ourselves. Whenever we do this, we have one hour to push our new images to our registry and then our token dies. Pushing again and off we go. And while that's happening and things are rolling over, let's pop over to the portal once again and check out our registry's webhooks. You can find them by clicking on, can you guess, webhooks in the menu on the left for our container registry. On the right, we can see web app 011 Elixir, which obviously seems like my web app. If I click on that, I can see two actions down below representing the two pushes I've made to the repository. You can click through and see the details if you're bored. Next, let's go see if our app updated yet. It's been a total of about two and a half minutes and yeah, look at that, it sure has. All right, before we go, let's take a look at something fun. The Azure Container Registry has the notion of tasks, little Docker jobs that it can perform for you. Now I'm not gonna jump into those aside from this one here, which is incredibly useful. The build task will take your code, load it to Azure, and then execute a Docker build command using Azure's resources. That's kind of neat. It opens the door to the wonderful, exciting, and never-ending world of DevOps. There are a lot of choices here, but I want to keep things simple and on target, so I'm going to ask Azure to build my local directory using my Azure Cast registry and an image name, which is also a repository name, of 011-Elixir. Once again, do not forget the dot that tells the command where to find your files. The Azure CLI zips up our code and sends it up to Azure, including our Docker file, which is the most important part. The exact same build process that happened on our local drive is now going off in Azure somewhere on one of its many servers. I don't need to devote resources to building this thing, which is really nice. After a few minutes, well, it's all done. Our webhook fires, letting the app service know to pull the updated image and then redeploy. If I want to, I can replace my push command with azacr build if I want to. It's up to you what makes the most sense for your project. Well, that's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you again soon.